Before Jesus left the earth, he gave every church this vision of building disciples who make other disciples. It's this incredible vision of building you, the disciple. But in order to build disciples, we have to first be a disciple. Now, in this group exercise, we're going to explore how you're allowing God to build you into his disciple. You know, your personal discipleship is a lifelong journey, but it's also a unique journey. And what this means is that you can't have a cookie-cutter approach to building you for every season of your life. Instead, each of you will have a unique pathway for your spiritual growth and your unique next step depending on the season of life that you are in. Now, to help us do this, we have developed a tool that you can use to help identify where you are and what your next step of discipleship growth can be. And we call this tool your personal discipleship survey. Now, it's a tool that evaluates where the five grace disciple-making values are at work in your life and how these values then determine your next steps to work with God to see Him bring change in your life and missional impact through your life. Now, before we begin using this tool, I want to go through a few important things to make sure that we're all on the same page about what this tool is and how to best use it. Firstly, this tool is designed to be used like Google Maps and not a scorecard. At first, this can look like a scorecard, like a scorecard to see how well you're doing and not doing, a scorecard that you can use to compare where you stand with others, but that is not how this tool is meant to be used. This tool is not to compare, but to clarify. I mean, if you think of Google Maps, uh, you know, you use it, we find out where we are, where we want to go, and then we're given the steps to get there. You miss a turn, no problem, look back at the map and see your new position and keep following the steps. And like Google Maps, this is a clarity tool to help you identify where you are, where you want to go, and what your unique next step is as a disciple. Now, secondly, this tool is not a to-do list, but steps that will help you experience God's power for change in your life and others. You know, at first, this tool can be used like a to-do list of things that you need to complete. Now, if you do do it that way, then you've done the survey wrong. We have to remember that God is at work, and these are steps that will help you join God and experience God's power for life change and missional impact in and through your life. And thirdly, this tool is to be used and reviewed continuously. You know, we know discipleship is a lifelong journey where we never arrive. And life can happen. Situations change and you can go through different seasons. And because of this, there's this changing dynamic in your life. And it is important to use this clarifying tool continuously and review where you are, where God wants you to be, and determine your next step of discipleship. Now, our recommendation is to use it about two to three times a year. Now that we're on the same page, let's get started. Now, each of you will find that survey in your handbook in session one under group exercise. Now, before you answer the questions, I will explain each disciple-making value one by one and what each question is looking for. It is important for all of us to be on the same page in our understanding of each value before you fill the survey. After each disciple-making value, I will tell you to press pause and you can mark where you are on the scale. Please answer as honestly as you can. No one else will see your survey unless you choose to share it. So let's get started. The first disciple-making value is groups and gatherings. And we value this because Jesus is experienced and revealed more when we're together than alone. You know, a pastor once said that our walk with God is a community project. And what that means is that our discipleship best happens in a group of believers. God has designed Christian community as a way we can experience and reveal the more of Jesus than we ever could just by ourselves. And so the first question is, are you consistently part of a group of believers? Do you see the need to belong to a group of believers? Do you find value in it? Are you consistently part of a group because you see the value of learning from and sharing with other believers? The second question is, are you experiencing and encountering Jesus in your group through one another? Have you encountered Jesus through others in your group? Have people in your group been impacted by your faith and relationship with God? Press pause on this video and mark where you are on this scale. When everyone has finished marking, you can continue to the next disciple-making value. 
Now, the second disciple-making value is reproducibility. Now, we value this because healthy disciples reproduce disciples. You know, oftentimes people measure spiritual health by how much of the Bible we know or how much we serve in the church. But one of the key measures of health is whether we are reproducing other disciple makers. You know, an easy question is to ask, do people want to be like me because they see Jesus in me? And so the first question is, are you discipling someone? Are you intentionally and proactively investing and journeying with another person? They might be Christian or non-Christian. It may be in a formal way or an informal way, casual, but you are intentional to see that person take steps to grow in your relationship with God. This might be sharing your faith with a non-believer, it might be leading someone through baptism, or walking with someone who's going through life issues and crisis, or even reading the Bible with someone. Now, the second question is, are you helping them disciple someone else? Are you intentionally investing and journeying with someone? And are you taking the next step to help them disciple someone else? Are you encouraging that someone, not just to receive from you, but to also give, to invest, to journey into the life of someone else in their world? Are you giving them the tools that they need to be able to do that? Are you equipping them to learn how to baptize someone else? Now, this is an important question because God doesn't want us to be the bottleneck to his mission. He wants us to reproduce in building disciples who know how to disciple another person and so on. Now, press pause in this video and mark where you are on this scale. And when everyone has finished marking, you can continue on to the next disciple-making value. Now, the third disciple-making value is actively hearing and obeying. Now, we value this because through hearing and obeying the living word, we work with God to see change in us and other people. You know, we believe the word of God is living, breathing, and life transforming, but it only brings change in our life when we hear the word of God for our lives and obey the word of God in our lives. The Bible says that when we hear the word and don't do what it says, we deceive ourselves and build our life on shaky ground. It's only when we actively hear and obey the Word of God that we work with God to see this change in us and other people. And so the first question is, how often do you experience hearing God speak to you through His Word? Do you share your experience of hearing God speak to you personally through the Word, giving you insight into who God is, insight about you and about your life situation? Now, the second question is, how often do you experience a change that God brings in your life when you obey His Word? Have you had the experience of the journey of obedience to what God has revealed to you in His Word and the change and impact that it has made in your life and the life of others? Now, it's important to note that these questions places an important focus on your personal relationship with God through hearing and obeying of His Word and not just through prayer or other ways which God can communicate with us. Oftentimes, we can come together in our group and analyze and discuss the Bible, but it doesn't touch our personal lives, and that's why we want to identify personal stories. Now, the stories we want to hear is when people share stories that sound a little bit like this. I was going through a struggle, and I heard God speak to me, and they opened a passage from the Bible and share from it. And when I did what it said, it changed my life. Now, press pause on this video and mark where you are on this scale. When everyone has finished marking, you can continue to the next disciple-making value. Now, the fourth disciple-making value is connecting. And we value connecting because Jesus connected with God and those near and far from Him. Now, Jesus lived out His life in three relationships, with God, with other believers, and those far from God. And these three connections are important and interdependent on one another. You know, one of the key ways that we know we love God is actually by the way we love other people. And the way we love other people well is by how much of the love of God is in us. But yet as Christians, we can often default into a Christian bubble and huddle. But we experience so much of God's grace through our connections with those far from God. And as a growing, life-impacting disciple, we need this balance of a healthy connection in all these three relationships in our lives. And the first question is, are you connecting with God during the week? Do you connect with God consistently from Monday to Saturday? 
I mean, this might be through worship, through the word, through prayer, Christian community, solitude. What is the quality of your connection with God? Is your love and hunger for God growing more and more each week? Now, the second question is, are you connecting with other Christians during the week? Do you connect with other believers in your group during the week outside the formal life group meeting? Do you communicate care and love for one another during the week? What is the quality of your connections with Christians around you? Do you depend on one another in times of need and crisis, or do you share life's struggles without feeling the sense of being judged? Do you make yourself available to help encourage and serve other believers? Now, the third question is, are you connecting with non-Christians during the week? Do you have a missional focus in how you connect with non-Christians at your workplace, your school, functions, neighbours, friends or family? Do you see and seize opportunities to share your spiritual journey, show practical love, and build genuine friendships with non-Christians in your life? Press pause in this video and mark where you are on the scale. And when everyone has finished marking, you can continue on to the next disciple-making value. The fifth disciple-making value is everyday moments. And we value this because the Holy Spirit uses everyday moments to shape us to become more like Jesus. You know, we often think that life is something that happens to us, but life is so much more than that. Life is something that God uses to make us more like Christ. And life is something that God uses to help us show Jesus to others. God, through the Holy Spirit, is at work in your everyday life, building you as His disciple. And on top of this, God uses your everyday life to give others a vision of Jesus. Everyday moments are things that happen in our very normal mundane life that God uses as key ways in which God grows us and grows others through us. Now, the first question is, are you seeing God at work in your everyday moments of life? God is at work in your life, but can you identify it in your everyday moments? Can you identify when God is speaking or prompting you about an aspect of your character, your relationships with other people, your relationship with God? It may be an anger issue when you are parenting your children or the courage to speak to someone on your way to work on the train or saying sorry to a friend. Do you have stories of everyday moments that God is using to disciple you? The second question is, are you allowing God to use your everyday moments to disciple you? It's one thing to be aware of it. It's another thing to surrender to God in those moments. When you are aware of those moments, do you allow God to use it to shape you to become more like Jesus? Do you continuously surrender and allow the Holy Spirit to convict you of sin, repentance, and faith? I mean, do you have stories of those everyday moments becoming a moment where the fruit of the Spirit grows in your everyday life, resulting in less stress, less complaining, less frustration, less worry or discontentment? Press pause on this video and mark where you are on this scale. Well, that's the end of the survey. Now you can continue to the group discussion and prayerfully determine your unique next step of discipleship.